Well, we're visiting my in-laws this week. They've got some pear trees, some apple trees, and some plum trees. And going out to look at some of those, I noticed next to an old trailer, they've actually got a volunteer calorie pear. A calorie is that same family of tree that the Bradford pears are part of. And they have a Bradford pear as well as a Bartlett style variety. And the two are pollinizers for one another. And I have a feeling that from that relationship, then we now have this calorie pair here. And uh, you know, it's a calorie pair and not a Bradford pair. We've got these huge thorns on the main trunk here and on the branches. That's a feature that's not present on the Bradford pears. And you'll notice if you have a, a European pear, sometimes the rootstock suckers that come up have the thorns as well, as these calorie pears are used for rootstock. So that's what we're gonna do with this one here. Basically, I wanna go through a little bit of what I would recommend for pruning practices when you find something like this. And if I find some viable wood from their current pear, maybe we'll see about doing a little bit of fall grafting here and see if we might get some results. Because of the distance, I don't visit here terribly often. We're down here in zone seven. They have enough of a season left. I think we can get something to heal over, but I'm not sure we're gonna get a lot of new growth out of it. Hopefully we do get some healing over and then we see some buds push out come spring. But first I wanna go through what I would do to prune something wild like this. And then we'll talk about what I would do for planning on that new growth. So first what we're gonna to wanna to develop here are some main scaffold branches. And really we see quite the whirl here at the bottom where we've got a lot of little branches coming out. And the smaller the branch, the easier it's gonna heal over. So what we're actually gonna do is go ahead and get rid of especially these small branches that are downward growing. And I wanna get rid of them right here at that branch collar for the best healing. That's where the most cell division occurs. So that'll be the best spot for healing over. Get a nice flush cut on that. We don't want some of these smaller ones, so we'll get rid of those as well. And one that's kind of growing out like this is not desirable either. So we'll try and get rid of that here as well. It looks as if the tree had gotten mowed or weed whacked somewhere down here, put out a new bud, came up here, put out a new one and put out several, so it probably had quite a bit of energy here in order to grow like this. But we wanna direct that energy uh, into some more meaningful places. What you really want for good fruit production are good, strong lateral branches, uh, and you want them to be fairly horizontal, which is a little harder with pears because they like to send off lots of these branches like this that want to grow straight up. We don't want a lot of competition for central leader here. And so what we're gonna go ahead and do, since we're trying to grow out this tree and get this one large main trunk here um, to grow out some scaffolds at different locations, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of some of these others that are growing up like that. So we've got two here. Uh, growing up like that, so I want to get rid of those. Get those out of the way. What I might do later is try and clean clean this up because we're going to have some dormant buds underneath here where I've made these cuts that are going to try and send out more shoots. So I'm going to try and get that closer to the actual trunk. Might have to go get a uh, these printers aren't going to do that for me, but I at least got those uh, cleaned out of the way that'll, and that'll help. Looks like we've got some amount of damage here on this branch, so I'm not thinking I want to keep that one, though it is growing in a good spot. None of these branches are growing too terribly toward the trailer, so I think we're good to, to leave these, some of these lower ones, um, but we don't want too many coming out of the same spot. I think I like this one the best. This one looks cleaner. It's coming out uh, more horizontally than this other one here. And I'm seeing actually some damage here on this one. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that. And again, we don't want multiple at the same spot. So we're going to go ahead and clear that out. And get rid of this one that had some damage here. 
This one's growing fairly well, but again, we don't want multiple. So we'll get rid of that. So we're gonna just keep this one here. This one really wants to grow straight up. And again, we don't want another one there. So we'll leave these couple leaves here, not try and pinch off any of that, just so it can have a little more growth room. Coming up here, we don't actually have another main kind of a branch until here, which will be just fine. Uh, we'll probably see that some of these in the middle here are going to send out some longer growth now that it's been cut back a little bit. And that's good. Hopefully we'll have some of these that want to shoot out. We'll just have to kind of see how those turn out. But this will be a good branch to start with. A uh, rule of thumb is to around where where your knee height is, is to have your first scaffold. Um, and this one growing this way is going to be fine for a little bit until it would get to the walkway here. But that shouldn't be too much of a problem. And I'm actually going to prune off just the very tip of this trunk because we don't want this tree to get too tall. And if I get rid of the top, then we should be able to slow down uh, the growth of the height and it should prevent it from growing too terribly tall. So I just snipped the top uh, two inches off or so. And we'll see how that does. Ideally, we're gonna want a bunch of branches that are largest at the bottom and coming out and they're gonna kind of curve up like this. And once these are all at the same height, we're gonna see that they're all competing to be the top of the tree and that should hold any of them back from growing uh, too much more than the rest. So that should help hold down that tree height overall and allow it to uh, have pretty evenly distributed growth. Hopefully we'll see that uh, say a say one of these here, you know, about a foot or a little more than a foot away from the first scaffold shoots out in this direction, or we see one shoot out in that direction, in the other direction, and just try and get, we'll probably let it have six or seven scaffolds just because of the tendency of these trees to get huge. We'll try and let it have a lot of different places where it can grow and expand uh, and not try and restrict it too much because I only get out here so often I don't want to be pruning it in such a way that I'd have to prune it three or four times a year just to get the growth that I want. So uh, it needs to be more of a long-term plan for that growth and planning on only maybe once or twice a year pruning it. So we're actually gonna go ahead and hold off on grafting. After talking with my in-laws, this tree over here that they've got, it makes pretty hard pears that they don't care for too much. So making even more of that doesn't really make much sense. But if you were to go ahead and do some grafting, you'd want to grab some of maybe these water sprouts that are growing here or some other new growth that you can find. Uh, this late in the season, when you get some of these branches, you're going to find under where these leaves are, uh, on some of these leaves, uh, that they've got some buds that are getting ready for next year. And you can utilize that for your grafting material. If you're grafting in the middle of summer, uh, whenever these buds are first maybe showing up, uh, then you can look for having that growth come out and be able to harden itself off on time to uh, get ready for winter. Or else, if you're doing real late fall grafting, which is more what we would have been doing here, then what you're really looking for is the graft to heal over. Uh, maybe put leaves out, but not actually put any growth out. That way, the graft is basically ready to go come spring in order to push out that new growth. So that would be what you were looking for. Uh, but for now, we're just going to go ahead and let the tree continue to grow, hopefully make some new scaffolds. We'll see where it's at next time I get out here, hopefully in the spring. And I'll plan on bringing some different varieties of pear with me from our home orchard and get them something that they'd rather eat. Thanks for watching.